interior Starbug corridor. Alarm lights are flashing, alert sirens are hooting, and Lister is chugging down the corridor, half asleep in his boxer shorts. Interior Medibay. In semi-darkness, something is thrashing, panting, whipping around under sheets. Crichton's hands are trying to calm it. No, no, try to relax. The door bursts open. It's Lister. No offense. None taken, ugly. But when you wake me up, it had better be good. Crichton points to the bed. It's Mr. Cat, sir. And it is indeed Cat on the bed, frothing at the mouth, his eyes wild. Crichton is connected to him by an intravenous line. Unless he breathes soon, he's going to die. Come on, Crichton. We can all get a bit frustrated sometimes. No, sir. This is deadly serious. To investigate, I dispatched a number of my own nanosensors into Mr. Cat's nervous system, patching them in now. On a view screen, against a soupy red field, bob a number of little Crichton heads with propellers on their back. One of them approaches the screen. Picking up toxic traces everywhere, sirs. How bad? This stuff is more poisonous than a day-old box of chicken dippers. I haven't cooked for a week. What could have poisoned him? Perhaps himself. Suicide? No, foreplay. As far as I can make out, it's a kind of inbuilt incentive system. The only antidote to this toxin is contained in the business end of a she-cat. But he's not in any fit state to hold hands, never mind. This is just a wake-up call, Mr. Lister, sir. In the short term, he'll recover, but if he doesn't do the horizontal tango soon, he turns to the screen. Pull back to wide view. The screen pulls back, the nano sensors getting smaller against a great red blob. What's his liver got to do with it? That's not his liver, sir. That's a sack of poison big enough to keep Lucretia Borgia busy for years. And it's primed to burst. But where are we going to find cat a date? Well, sir, when the cat peoples abandoned Red Dwarf during the cat wars, many of them perished. But some may have survived. We could reset Starbug's tracking mandate from Find Red Dwarf to Find Pussy, if you forgive me, sir. Divert from the search? Seems to me an inherent weakness in the species if procreation has to be enforced by death. Really? And who'd breed with you except at gunpoint? He makes for the door. I'll get to the Navicom. Exterior Starbug, a few moments later. Starbug swerves to change course. Interior cockpit, later. Rimmer is sitting at the helm, watching the scanners. Lister sticks his head in the doorway. Anything? Not a sausage. And there won't be either. Here we have an individual who thinks an emergency flare is something you carry in case of a sudden 70s party. If he's typical, they must have died out centuries ago. Crichton calls from the midships. There's nothing to do but wait, sir. Come back and finish your game. Interior midships that same moment. Lister comes back to the table where Crichton is sitting with a game of dominoes in front of him. Can't believe these were still in the back of me locker. Thought I'd lost them in a bet with me old schoolmate Duncan. Really, sir? What was the wager? Who could pee the highest up the war memorial? I had the pressure, I just didn't have the accuracy. Well, speaking as the mechanoid who wipes the bathroom floor, sir, I'd say plus a change. Anyway, your go. I'm knocking. Lister knocks. Crichton places a domino. Lister knocks again. Crichton places another domino. And so on, four more times getting quicker until Crichton is out. You won the last six games? A seven, sir. It's like you know what I've got, what I'm going to do next. Yes. You do? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? From a cursory glance at the indentations and slight scuffing on each domino, we can easily identify and memorize which is which, and therefore accurately hypothesize which one our opponent will play next. I am sorry, is there supposed to be some element of surprise? Yes, Crichton. It's meant to be a battle of wits. Oh, I thought it was purely ceremonial, like the gay Gordons. Would you like another game, sir? I could close my eyes. Lister gets up. There's no point, Crichton. 
You're like a bent one-armed bandit. Please, sir, some of my closest relatives are trivia machines. Oh! Lister has gone. Interior Medibay, a few moments later. Darkness. The click and whir of a slide projector. Cat, dimly lit, is sitting up in bed. A remote control in his hand, a glazed expression in his eye as he gazes off camera. In the gloom, Lister stumbles his way from the door to the bed. Hiya, Cat. Hello, Slides, eh? What are you up to? What's it look like? Looks like a lot of girls in cheesy kitten outfits from the... He tilts his head to read. Kit Kat Club Bangkok. Lister nudges him. Hey, you must be feeling better if you got the energy for all this. This is my medicine. This is a scientific prescription to reduce my temperature. Must be the only thing headed downwards just now. You can laugh, but soon I'll be stiffer than a Doc Martin boot. Look, Kat, I was wondering, how come you never mentioned this little condition of yours before? Maybe you never asked. Lister is stung. Cat looks at his watch and reaches for a new box of slides. Time for medicine. What's that? Double dose. Interactive stills of Michelle Pfeiffer in Batman 2. Just then, the alert siren starts to hoot. Lister leaps up. That's the tracking system. Interior cockpit shortly after. Rimmer is standing over a scanning monitor on which a large blip is clearly visible. Crichton and Lister stand behind him. It's an enigmatic trace. How? From the Krillian spectra we're downloading through the Navicon. It could well be an adult female cat. Yes! Or then again, it could be a catering pack of mushroom soup. And it's on a transport headed directly into Gelf space. Hmm, hostile Gelf space. They all look at each other. Then suddenly Lister sits down at the helm. Oh, come on, fellas. What's the worst that can happen? We get something to dunk our toast in. He takes the helm. Exterior Starbug, that moment. Starbug's boosters fire as it swings round to tail a great hulking transport headed towards a pale green planet with three bright moons. Exterior Day, Woods, several hours later. Crichton is leading the Starbuggers through the forest. Do beware, sirs, that whereas the Kinatowawi tribe were primarily bred as quartermasters, the Burferwino Gelfs of this sector were created as butchers. They are powerfully built, excellent swordsmen, and possess three separate sets of teeth, one for hunting, one for eating prey, and one for tearing the cellophane off VHS videos. You sure you're up to this? I'm as fit as a fiddle. Besides, they can't be so tough if all they've got is little old swords and teeth and... A seven-foot Brafuino guard crosses their path. All freeze as he passes. Maybe I still have a slight temperature. Exterior day, the gates. A few minutes later. Several tough-looking gelfs are guarding the gates of the settlement. A little way off, the Starbug party assembles. Now, are we all sure we have our badges of merchantship? Only traders are allowed within these walls. Lister has a potato attached to his jacket. Does this potato mean I'm a farmer or something? Correct, sir. Mr. Cat, your bottle of junior aspirin signifies your status as an apothecary. Meanwhile, I sport a hairbrush, as might a barber. And what about this frying pan you've given me? It means you're a tosser. Straight through, now! Crichton leads them single file through the gateway each stepping gingerly between the enormous guards. All goes well until it is Cat's turn, when all of a sudden, the swords of the guards are out and poised at his throat. Thanks, guys, but I shave electric. Lister looks back. Cat's in trouble. We gotta help him. You and whose army? It's Zorro City back there. One of the Gelf guards is leaning very close to Cat, sniffing. It's my cologne, isn't it? Too much fish? I'll go back and change it. But all of a sudden, the swords are put away, and the big gelf is slapping Cat on the back. boy, Uh, yeah. He says he's very sorry, sir. For a moment there, he thought you were a cat. I am a cat. 
I wouldn't go shouting about it, sir. According to my onboard lexicon, the word for cat in Briferino is the same as the word for four-limbed crispy bar snack. Crichton hooks Cat by the arm and whisks him inside the gate, waving cheerily back to the guards. Exterior day, the marketplace. The marketplace is alive with Brafuino and Kinatawawi Gelfs bustling about, carrying bundles, browsing the many stalls. It's just like a supermarket on a Saturday morning. Don't be ridiculous. This place is a dangerous free-for-all, where everything has its price and violence is never far away. And... Actually, um, yeah, take your point. OK, fellas, somewhere here is a she-cat, and the only way to find her is to stick together. They set off through the market, single file. Don't worry, sir. I can't imagine what any of us could find to distract us. Anyway... Crichton's eye is caught by a stall he is passing. Oh, my lord! A complete wash wiper and valet kit. Crichton is left behind as the party moves on. This is the life, eh, Lister? Defying mortal danger to infiltrate an alien colony. Every moment fraught with... He stops and double takes at a stall. Excuse me, is that really a catalogue of early 21st century shuttlecraft license plates? Now only Lister and Cat are left in line. Don't worry, Cat. We're all right behind you, man. To one side, through a pair of saloon doors, a gelf is ejected into the street. He falls at Lister's feet and vomits on his shoes. Gelf Chunde? He looks at the saloon doors. Music and laughter issues from inside. Gelf music? An idea occurs. Gelf Lager? Crichton? Cat? Lister looks around. Cat has disappeared. Lister licks his lips, tempted. Just the one, then. Lister nips into the saloon. Exterior day, the marketplace, a few moments later. Cat is sniffing around. Hey, guys. I think I'm onto something. He looks round. Guys? Stick together, huh? I've seen better teamwork in the Welsh crochet squad. But somewhere around here... Two great carcasses of meat part in front of him. And there she is. A dynamite she-cat in combat fatigues, currently knocking a slavering gelf off the bars of the cage that holds her. This is Aura. I'm nobody's pork scratching, you great orthodontic oaf. Baby! Cat smooths off his jacket, straightens his hair and licks his armpit, then sidles up to the cage. Ha! Tanzel, Aura, Sub-Lieutenant, 2960-B8651. Uh, yeah? Button? That's all you're getting, imbecile. Aura turns away in a great icy sulk. Imbecile! She called me an imbecile! Nice cage! How'd you get in it? Betrayal? Treachery? Like someone borrowed your best shoes? Like someone sold us out to the other side. Even before they attacked, our weapons were half-drained, our armor fractured, the whole platoon wiped out. A moment passes in sad remembrance. Cat nods. I get that too. When I've been on my feet all day, wiped out. Go on, I want to know all about you. Why? Well, I, you know, I, I uh, thought we might, uh, well, uh, go out and stuff. Aura looks at Cat, then bursts into laughter. What's the matter? Am I not your imbecile anymore? <laughs> no, no, my apologies. It just, it's been a long time, but I only ever consider liaisons with other cats. That's great, fine. I'm your boy. <laughs> you a cat? Yeah. Meow? Stop it. Cat bears his fangs and claws. No, really. You're serious? A cat? But you have no poise, no instinct. You don't even smell like a cat. Cat's jaw drops. Aura shrugs. I assumed you were a social worker. Interior Starbug, corridor, later. Lister is trotting up the corridor, holding a small glass jar of something green. Hey, fellas, that bar there is some sort of gambling den, and you'll never guess what they use as gaming chips. Mushy peas. Lister walks through into midships. It's dark. He slows and stops. Fellas, there's a low growl from out of the dark. 
Yeah, I could do with some lunch too. Cat looms out of the shadows. He is toting a bazookoid and baring his fangs. He growls again. <sighs> Cat, nasty cough you've got there, man. Cat prowls around Lister. All these years you've been treating me like a funny animal, the cute domestic kitty, till I don't know who I am anymore. You're the cat, the one with the big dry cleaning bill. I'm slowly got timid, logical, almost human. I'm practically a rail track ticket clerk. I can't even leap anymore. Look, a little table like this. Cat stands beside the table and makes a pathetic series of tiny hops. Well, it is a bit high, that. Try the chair. Oh, yeah, the chair. The chair should be easy. Cat's leaps don't put him anywhere near landing on the chair. Hey, I know. Have a crack at this. Lister takes a couple of magazines from the table and stacks them on the floor. Cat leaps and lands on top of them. There you go, high jump champion. Oh, yeah? Beware the cat. He can get on top of a small pile of magazines. Why was it always find Red Dwarf, find other humans? Why was it never find Cat, his people? We would have got round to it. Now they don't know me. I'm an Uncle Tom Cat. And I'd hate to guilt trip you or anything, but I'm probably gonna die, and it's all your fault. Cat grabs his bazookoid and sweeps out. Lister takes a moment to grasp all this. <sighs> Heavy. There's a cough from the cockpit hatch. <coughs> Who's that? Crichton appears out of the shadows. He now has a pair of wash wiper blades on his nipples. They're whirring. Crichton, did you hear all that? Uh, no, sir. I uh, was too busy with the... Uh, uh... You think it's my fault, don't you? That he's become a kitty and not a cat? Not at all, sir. It's not as if you've given him a saucer of milk and tickled his tummy every day of his life. Lister nods. Right. We ran out of milk two or three weeks ago. Still, I can't help but feel responsible. Lister sits down, depressed. Crichton's attention is drawn by the small jar of mushy peas on the table. Ah, prefer Wienong. Universal Gelf currency, sir, in the form of small, delicately preserved pulses. Mushy peas, yeah. I won them in the gambling den at Pontu. Funny thing was me hand was really tragic. But your next hand was tip-top? Yeah, so? Four-dimensional pontoon, sir. You bet on the hand you're going to get next. That's stupid. That's Gelf's. Stupid on legs. Lister opens the jar and starts to snack on the mushy peas. If only I could help Cat. Exterior night, Gelf Marketplace. Tense, Mission Impossible type music. Cat is sneaking among and beneath the stalls with his bazookoid like an SAS man. At least, that's what he thinks. Though crippled by cruel years of domestication, the Cat Commando still moves with the grace of a panther. Looking behind him for ambush, Cat bonks his head on an overhanging stall sign. It hurts. Ow! He hits the sign a second time. God damn! He starts off again. Avoiding carefully the deadly traps set by his enemies, Cat Commando, Colonel Cat Commando, advances with every sense alert. Cat ducks expertly under another hanging sign, smiles in satisfaction, and falls down a hole. For a moment, he is gone entirely. Then his head reappears. Always ready for sudden attack, poised to strike his foes like a... A Gelf guard has appeared by the hole. He reaches down and helps pull Cat out. Uh, yeah, thanks, thanks, yeah. The guard hands Cat back his bazookoid, salutes, and walks away. Cat resumes his journey. Anyway, always elegantly turned out, Cat Commando cuts a dash among... With a crack of thunder, there is a sudden downpour directly on Cat, drenching his silk combat fatigues into mush. Exterior night, marketplace, shortly after. Aura is sitting moodily in her cage when she hears a strange noise. Squelch, squelch, squelch. She looks up. It's Cat, everything about him drooping and dripping. Hiya, baby. It's your cat commando. Come to the rescue. Cat? 
Surely any cat would have known there will be a storm at 927. Aura is revealed as wearing a camouflage combat mac. Nice raincoat. Standard issue. Anyway, stand back. Cat hefts the bazookoid to his shoulder and lets fly a blast at the bars of the cage. They remain unaffected. <clears throat> Just a second. Cat blasts again, twice. Still nothing. Any moment now. Cat keeps his finger on the trigger this time. Blam, blam, blam. The bars aren't even smoking. Aura stands watching, picking her nails. Why can't you just sense that the cage is made of auradite? That every blast of energy just makes it stronger? Could it be because you're not a cat? Here, give me the charger leads. Aura whips two leads out of the back of the bazookoid and connects them to the bars. Now bung it on fast charge, reversing the flow of energy. She throws a switch on the bazookoid. The bars go gray, ashen, and then fall out. Plink, plink. Meanwhile, the bazookoid glows white hot in Cat's hands and, as he throws it away, explodes. Hey, I knew all that. I did. Aura climbs out through the missing bars. Yeah, right. Now, that castle gate is... Cat takes her arm. This way, babe. Trust me. And that way, of course, there are four big Gelf guards waiting. Don't worry, guys. We're not cats. With one stroke, Cat is knocked unconscious and brushed aside. Meanwhile, the guards fall on Aura, and though she levels one with a flying kick to the groin and blinds another with a sharp jab of her fingers, in the end, there are too many and she is dragged back to her cage, kicking and screaming. <coughs> Stupid damn pretend cat who doesn't have the instinct of a ceramic tile. Bang! Goes the door of her cage. Cat raises his head groggily. I hate you! Suddenly, the Gelf guards part, saluting in deference to another, larger Gelf wearing a very particular ornate belt. Zural! Mute and ugly, Zural eyes Aura in a nasty way, running his tongue over his three sets of teeth. He looms in. <laughs> Interior midships later. Lister has gathered Crichton and Rimmer round the table. OK, this is the plan. We go to the gambling den, we win loads of money, we buy Cat's girlfriend in the livestock auction, they fall in love, he doesn't croak. Lister beams proudly. Lister, I've seen better plans in an airfix kit. Well, it's a start. But you mentioned winning, sir. Please don't take this wrongly, but on a scale of gamesmanship from zero to Steve Davis, you rate a little worse than a colorblind mongoose. That's why we have to cheat. You counted dominoes, Triton. You can count cards. But, sir, mechanoids aren't allowed within ten meters of a gaming table. We'll work a system. Signals, you to Rimmer to me. A sniff means bet high, a wink means bid low. Tell me, what's the signal for they've rumbled us and are about to chew our features off with a rotary sander? Uh, just cough for that one. Crichton frowns. I don't know, sir. My ethics applications may not let me countenance such dishonesty. Why, if I went around cheating all the time, where would we be? Somewhere expensive, man. Oh, come on, Crichton. Think of Cat. I mean, look at him. Lister punches up a view of Cat's cabin on the monitor. Cat is hunched over pitifully, standing next to a small pile of magazines. Come on, man. Just one more magazine. A leaflet, maybe. You gotta try. Make her love you. Crichton turns away from the monitor, wiping at his face. Oh, sirs. My sediment disc seems to be downloading in my optic tracts. I... Crichton turns decisive. I'm in. Let's fleece the bastards. Interior day, the gaming den. Later. Smoke, music, bustle. A gelf wanders past eating a deep-fried crispy cat. Two more, arm in arm, drink beer and raise high their winnings. Great jars of mushy peas as they stagger out of the door, next to which stands Crichton, looking shifty. In, in, in on Crichton's darting eyes, until we see what he sees. Crichton vision. Through scrolling columns of information and analysis, 
Crichton crash zooms in. A hundred times flashes up. A thousand times on a pack of cards at a table across the room, which, although stacked in a dealer's hand, now digitally unravel themselves in a fan until two cards are picked out by flashing outline. A strange, ugly king and a nine of some lumpy alien hearts. Next hand, says the display. Bet high. Sniff now. Crichton sniffs. <sniffs> Across the room, by the bar, stands Rimmer, looking inconspicuous with his ginger beer and cocktail umbrella. He sees Crichton sniff, nods, and sniffs in turn to Lister. <sniffs> Crichton vision. Lister, at the table, his back to Crichton, among a circle of mean-looking gelfs. He sees Rimmer's sniff and ladles a great wadge of mushy peas from a little pot in front of him to a great big pot in the middle of the table. The cards are dealt. Lister wins, and the central pot is emptied into his own. Not altogether subtly, he turns and gives Crichton a chirpy thumbs up. Crichton jumps nervously, pretending he knows nothing. At the table, Lister is crowing to his opponents, who nervously consult their various aids and lucky charms. You see, gentlemen, you may have your crystal balls and your psychic subetha enhancement implants, but only a real gambler knows how to play four-dimensional pontoon. I trained. I'm a graduate of the Lotsa Slots Arcade Birkenhead. Lister's glass is empty. Excuse me a sec. Lister leaves the table. Behind him, the Gelfs exchange ugly looks. This guy is really getting on my tits. General nods of agreement. At the bar, Lister slams down his glass. Another one, please. Rimmer regards him, concerned. Lister. It's all right. I promised, didn't I? It's only water. Crichton approaches the bar, pretending very heavily that he doesn't know Lister and isn't talking to him. Crichton, you're amazing. We haven't lost once. It's like taking candy from a six-foot sword-wielding monster. Please, sir, can you keep your voice down? I know it's in a good cause, but I can't help feeling cheaper than a Brazilian soap opera. Oh, relax, man. He takes a big swig of water. Let's go make mushy peas. Lister walks back to the table. Rimmer looks at the jug of water on the bar, discoloured brownish stuff. Funny-looking water, this. Hmm? Crichton sticks his finger in it and tastes it. Ah, oh, well, sir, I'd say that's because they filter it using fermented barley and industrial kerosene. Rimmer and Crichton look at each other in alarm, then at Lister. Crichton vision. Lister, patently pished, is flicking his mushy peas around. One gelf gets hit on the ear, another in the eyes. He's still knocking back the, uh, water. You want my peas? Come on, then. The Gelfs snarl, fingering their swords. Rekindle. All right, short ass. Outside, now. Lister holds his hand up, innocent. No, no, sorry, no, no. Come on, let's just bet, eh? The Gelfs sit down again, surly. Lister looks up expectantly to Crichton. Crichton zooms in on the deck of cards, from which pop out digitally a four and a five. Dog of a hand, says the display. Bet low. Wink now. Crichton winks furiously. Lister winks back and ladles lots of peas from his pot into the middle. Thinks about it, picks up his pot, empties the whole thing in and winks again at Crichton, pleased. He's not getting the message. What's the message? Not a good day to buy a Porsche. The cards are dealt. Lister cannot believe his hand. One of the Gelfs rakes in the pot. Eh, uh, there must be some mistake. Lister looks at Crichton, indicates, wink high, sniff low, yes? Crichton and Rimmer shake their heads in despair. Et ninta Who's laughing now? Tansmada. The Gelfs chuckle. Lister gets some peas in the face. He burns with drunken humiliation. All right, all right, the night is young. Let's play another hand. He's not thinking of playing another hand, is he? I'm afraid so, sir. But he's got nothing left to... These are the ignition keys to a Class 2 ship-to-surface shuttle. Fully armoured, decently powered, nice runner. Only four careful owners. 
Rimmer picks up a bar stool. He can't bet if he's technically unconscious, can he? Crichton holds him back. Just a second, sir. Crichton vision. The pack is unscrolling digitally to reveal a king and an ace. Best hand ever, says the display. Sniff now. What? Sniff, sir. Sniff till your nostrils get friction burn. Lister drops the Starbug keys in the central pot and looks up to see Rimmer and Crichton sniffing and thumbs-upping like Billio. Here we go then, gents. Deal. The dealer starts to deal, and as the cards go round the table, Lister is rubbing his hands, and Rimmer and Crichton are twirling arm in arm at the bar. But before the cards reach Lister, Zural the Gelf has suddenly sat down next to him and been dealt Lister's hand. Lister looks at his new hand, a two and a three. He looks up at Rimmer and Crichton, who stand aghast. He looks at Zural, who is twirling the keys to Starbug around his pointy finger. Bloody cheated you! Interior, the gambling den, a few moments later. Zural is striding out of the den with a great jar of mushy peas, and the Starbug keys are jingling. Crichton is closely following him, with Rimmer behind supporting a drunken Lister. Please, sir, I beseech you. He wasn't gambling for mere profit, but risking his all for the life of a friend. Where's your compassion? Where's your sense of charity? Zural turns, and in the same instant his sword is at Crichton's throat. Ah, I see sir gave already. Zural goes. I take it that was a no, then? Well, thank goodness the auction won't have begun yet. Otherwise, Mr. Cat might have started spending money he doesn't have. What do you mean, not begun? It's noon. Crichton bangs his head. And they say quartz is completely accurate. Exterior day, the marketplace, at that moment. On a podium, a weaselly-looking Gelf auctioneer is banging his hammer. Barota, going, barota, going, gone. Back. A happy Gelf steps up with a jar of mushy peas to claim a pile of fly-blown meat on the podium. At the back of a crowd of Brafrino and Kinatawawi Gelfs stands Cat. He wrinkles his nose at the meat. Man, I wouldn't feed that to a dog. He glances at his auction list. Oh, it is a dog. Aura is led onto the podium, restrained by chains. Edradu, and now, the snack you can eat between meals. The crowd growls approvingly. If I had a blaster, you'd all be charcoal briquettes. Cat has appeared by the podium. Don't you worry, non baby. Me and the guys are gonna buy you right out of there. Aura rolls her eyes. Really? Why don't I feel reassured? Now then, gentlemen. The bidding begins. A gelf raises his finger. Cat raises his finger. Another gelf bids. Cat raises two fingers. Cool, enjoying himself. This is easy. See, honey, I'm good with my fingers. All the time, the auctioneer counts the bids in sing-song brufuino. Soon the gelfs are getting annoyed. The bidding speeds up, and the cat is having to jerk his hand up and down constantly to top every bid. And me, ten more. I'll double that. Hell, I'll treble it. Until the price is so high that the gelfs peter out and stop bidding. Going once to the strange cat-like bloke at the front. Ah, you dudes got the teeth. You just don't got the dough. He turns to see Crichton and Rimmer next to him, supporting Lister between them. Um, yes. Cash flow. Small problem. Come on, man. Make with the peas. I got bills to pay here. Going twice. Blunt mode. Sir, no cash. You're dead, she's lunch. No cash? You're marginally less liquid than a packet of cuppa soup. Going. Bang! A great big jar of peas is whacked on the podium. On the other end of it is Zural. I'll double his bid. Everyone, including Aura, looks at Cat. Cat thinks for a moment. Could I arrange a small loan? Aura slaps her forehead. Oh, I despise him. The auctioneer bangs his hammer. Sold to the trader Zural. Aura is led off in chains by Zural. Cat, incensed, turns on Lister. You let me down again. I'm sorry, really. I'm... 
couldn't get us a glass of water, could you? I'm gonna get her back, and I don't need your help. You against two tons of fur and muscle, earth to cat. I'd rather die a cat than live as someone's pet. Suit yourself. Give me the collar and the worming tablets any day of the week. Be logical, sir. He's bigger than you. He's faster. He has more chewing gear than a White House shredder. I don't need logic. I'm a cat. I need instinct. Cat pulls a sword from the scabbard of a nearby gelf and dashes off after Zural. Crichton and Rimmer look at each other. Dead. Dead. Exterior day, round the back of the cages, a few moments later. Glancing around him, Zural pushes Aura back into a dark corner, menacingly. Aura spits at him. I want you to know that when you've eaten me alive, I'm going to haunt your intestines. Suddenly, Zural is tapped on the shoulder. He spins and sees Cat leaning casually on a cage. Hey, Bug Teeth, you ever use that sword? Or is it the only thing you can find to dangle down your trousers? And suddenly they're sword fighting. Zural going at it furiously, driving Cat backwards. <laughs> I'm afraid you're dead, Mr. Pretend Cat. Cat turns to her, still fighting. <laughs> Thanks for the encouragement. I'm sorry. Just the way it is. He's a skilled murderer. You're an idiot. He'll kill you very soon. Uh, how soon? Effectively, you're already dead. What? Like this? Suddenly, Cat stops dead. Like a statue, mouth open, eyes staring straight ahead. Zural, about to strike, hesitates. Looks for a long moment at Cat. Reaches out an exploratory finger to touch his frozen opponent. And suddenly, Cat has sprung back to life again, knocking Zural backwards with his sword. Ah! Fooled you! Now it's Cat who's on the offensive, hopping on one leg while he slices at the gelf. Uh, why are you doing that? Uh, I don't know. Call it instinct? Call it bonkers, more like. But Zural is clearly confused by Cat's erratic behaviour. And further thrown when Cat avoids his every stroke, hopping this way and that as if Cat knew when and where Zural was going to strike. Finally, Cat sticks his left hand out, at the ready for no apparent purpose, while still fighting with his right. A moment or two later, in the thick of the battle, Zural trips, and his sword goes flying straight into Cat's waiting hand. Cat pins the gelf to the ground with the tips of two swords. Ah! Ah! Hey, I can't decide. Are you Donna or Sheesh? Meanwhile, Crichton, Rimmer and Lister have arrived and stand to one side, amazed. Well, I'll be a galloping space elk. I'm cantering right alongside you, sir. That's my cat, that is. Though not in the owner pet possessive sense, mind you. Zural squirms to get free. Cat raises his sword to strike a final blow. And then... Wait! Wait! It spoke. Zural touches his ornate belt, and all of a sudden his form is changing, from seven-foot gelf to five-foot catman. Ah, oh, Captain. Sub-Lieutenant. You know this guy? He led my platoon. Does that mean I can't kill him? I had to adopt a morphing belt to move among the gelfs, otherwise I would never have found you. Zural gets up, produces a key, and frees Aura from the neck chain. Cat looks on, disconsolately. Comrade. Comrade. They embrace. And that's when Cat throws his sword, spearing Zural through the middle. He crumples and dies. Zural? Steady on. If I didn't know better, I'd say that was a gratuitous act of jealous rage. Cat stoops in the hay around Zural's body. He holds up a tiny, razor sharp dagger. And what's this then? A toothpick? You want to know who betrayed your platoon? Reckon I'm standing on him. I... I don't... I mean, what can I... Hey, shut up and stick your tongue in my mouth. He takes her in his arms and they kiss extendedly. Meanwhile, Rimmer sneaks over and whips the Starbug keys out of Zural's jacket. He addresses the corpse. Mind if I... No, not at all. Go right ahead. He joins Crichton and Lister, who are walking away. Pure unbridled instinct. Arguably superior to any Meg of onboard ram. Oh, yeah. He might be stupid, our cat, but he's not thick. Interior Starbug cockpit, later. 
Rimmer, Crichton and Lister at their places in the cockpit, talking on the comm to the cat, who appears on a monitor. All systems in survival pod check out, food and oxygen for two, transferring last coordinates of cat sighting to your navicom now. What about the sounds, man? Yes, yes, Barry White's 20 bump and grind classics already loaded in your mellow deck. Rimmer, Crichton, would you mind if Cat and I have a moment or two, you know? Oh, sensitivity alert. Not at all, sir. The hankies are right next to the laser missile guidance control. Crichton and Rimmer troop out. Lister takes a deep breath. Listen, Cat, I know I didn't always treat you with the respect a proud and instinctual creature should be treated with. And, well, I'm sorry. You see, I'll miss you very much. And... Listen, could you keep it short? Small matter of dying if me and the lady don't get busy real soon. Aura appears on the monitor, biting Cat's ear. <sighs> What's keeping you? Just a second, hon. Human thing. Aura sighs and disappears. Okay, Cat. Au revoir. Yeah, and... Goodbye as well. Exterior Starbug, that same moment. An escape pod flashes off into the vast blackness of space. Interior cockpit, a little while later. Lister is staring out at space, thinking. When Rimmer pops back into the cockpit, he has a sledgehammer. Don't think anyone would mind if I knocked Cat's cabin through into mine, do you? No. Just in terms of service to Space Corps, I'm due at least 3.7 cubic metres more room. Plus, he's got a rug. Rimmer, have you ever lost a friend and thought, how could I let myself do that? I must change. From now on, I'll tell everyone I know how much I love them. Rimmer thinks, can't say it's happened to me. Listen, Rimmer. Lister looks at him squarely. Me and you... There's a long pause while Lister finds out what he feels. What? Forget it. You're the exception that proves the rule. Suddenly, Cat pokes his head through the doorway, grinning, full of beans. Cat, what are you doing here? Interior midships that same moment. Lister and Rimmer come through to see Cat, just as Crichton comes through from the corridor. Mr. Cat! You must have loved her very much, sir, to undertake such a long-term relationship. Long term? You've only been gone 20 minutes. Cat nods. Right. It was a deep thing. Committed. When I dropped her off at that planetoid, she and I swore we'd never forget each other. You know, me and... What's her name? I'm appalled. You've got the morals of a tapeworm. Yeah, but I got the leap of a cat. And then, suddenly the cat is gone. Blink. Vanished into thin air. Crichton and Lister and Rimmer look around, confused. Then they hear his voice. Hey! All look up in amazement. Cat is on the ceiling, clinging with his nails. He licks the ceiling exploratively. Huh. When was it again we did tuna bake in the pressure cooker? <laughs>